I have Chrissy's dream here. Hog's breath is a sativa. This is A4, which is a strong indica. I got hash. Okay, that's cool. Love it, man. When Proposition 215 came into effect, the Attorney General, who is now our governor, Jerry Brown, came up with some regulations. It was called the Compassion Act. And it was for people like ourselves who had chronic pain. It was not meant for people to get high. It was for people who had these major, major problems in their health. We take care of only chronically ill people. I have found a woman who is just as compassionate about people and animals as I am. Anyone who has ever come to our home will see a menagerie of every kind of species. Um, I actually was diagnosed with a knee problem, didn't want to take their medication that the doctor recommended because it had animal byproducts in the medication. And I am a vegetarian, I've been one for 20 years. I um, looked for an alternative medicine, went and got an evaluation, met Stuart because he was the caregiver, obviously. And um, the first or second visit that I had with him, he expressed to me that he needed um, someone to, do et et to make edibles very casually. And I thought, I can do that. And these are just a few of the things we have for the bakery. Um, we have bread, which is actually Stuart's favorite. <laughs> and we have brownies and chocolate and oatmeal cookies. Bakery's named after... Uh, uh, our, our chocolate lab, Nestle, and he passed away about two years ago, and about a week after that is when I created the bakery, and the chocolate lab bakery, in his honor, seemed very, very appropriate. So, how do you financially take care of all these animals? Honestly, through the bakery. I mean, if I, if I didn't have that resource, I would be done for. Let's get ready to go to work. Nice day. It's gorgeous, man. We ready? Let's go and hope for the best. This is what you ordered online? Yeah. This is a new machine that rolls cigarettes. But we're going to roll cannabis. Look at this. We just have to figure it out. Now start the machine by pressing the start button until the filter tube. Oh. Wow, look I at know. That. It's so cute. We need to go to Michael's and get those little baggies so we can sell them individually because not everybody can afford like a 10 pack. You know, right. but it's okay, so that's a great cute. idea. Look great at idea. it. Oh, here's a patient. Oh. William, come on in. Hey, you. How are you? Oh, I'm doing better. Yep. Hydration's dripped into you. A chemotherapy is dripped into you, another hydration is dripped into you, another chemotherapy bag is dripped into you. It's every other bag until your last bag is hydration, and then your round is finished. Effects are immediate, immediate. When you wake up, you, you, or let's just say when I wake up, and I'm probably others, you feel the poison going through you. It's, it's like a really bad feeling. I mean, you actually can feel it going through your body and you actually feel your stomach and your intestines just start nodding up to where, okay, nothing's coming in, nothing's coming out for a while, and it's just an awful feeling. Immediately when you're out of a session, the smoke helps because it's in your system the fastest. That helps get away that poisoning feeling. Then as soon as you can eat, which the smoking will help you to eat, as soon as you can eat anything and get your body flow going, then the faster you come off of chemo. If you can eat an edible, it does take a while to digest, and that's for anything after chemotherapy, but your body absorbs the medical marijuana that's in the edibles to where your body becomes more relaxed. It's a lot easier to sleep, and the poisoning feeling isn't as bad also. Are you in any pain? No, actually, I've been doing pretty good here. I mean, the pain, there's always some pain, yeah. but you know. 
I'm, I'm not at the real high pain. Really. Stu told me he would deliver to me any time, no problem. And he realized how bad off I really was. And Stu pretty much is, I can call him on the phone and he'll make sure that I have something to take care of my side effects. They're pretty much like family. They grow on you. They're very good people. They're very good caregivers, which is my term for him now. He's a caregiver. And I thank him every day. William, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The best of health always, man. Always, man. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Love you. Yes. Yes. I will stop by, see the wife, see how she's doing. Yeah, absolutely. Give me a call. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh oh, here we go. We have a clinic right across the street. We're not a dispensary. We are a private collective. The police are definitely a scary, a scary aspect of what's going on. Um, not that they've ever done anything truly invasive. I think the worst visit, we were kind of pushed up against the RV with our hands behind our backs, and, you know, Stuart was body searched. They went through my purse and things like that. You know, when you see a, a, pl a policeman in uniform, you do, your heart kind of skips a beat. So, and especially, it especially affects me when there's patients in the RV or they're walking up to the RV. My worst fear is actually not coming home to my animals one day, because I, I don't know who would care for them if something happened to both Stuart and I. So that's... Whenever I, honestly, whenever I see the police or I hear a siren, I think, I, I'm, you know, are we gonna go home? Are we gonna be able to feed the dogs tonight? You know what? I have found my soulmate, my true soulmate. She is as much compassionate about animals and human beings as I am. As far as me kind of being committed to Stuart, through the last couple of years, I've seen more, several individuals, certainly more than one that have come into his life with with different pretenses because of the cannabis and you know different goals in mind so I, I almost feel like a protector in some odd way this is my mission I want to help people who are chronically ill